Aloha all. This is Unconventional Insights, Samana, and it is my 15th podcast. We're still in the time of Libra, which this is the month of about relationships. So for the next, this week and next week, I'm going to continue that theme. And today is about what is self-love and how that plays out in different ways. So I want to say how this path evolved for me. In my 20s, I started into meditation more focused. I still drank a little bit, but not a lot, and kind of what's done with that. Did that more in my teens, and uh, I call it the dragon's path. And so I was waking up, and different things were happening. But I remember like reading some spiritual books and different things, and I was a little bit of a cynic living on Maui coming from L.A. I was still more city fied at that point. And I would hear about self-love, right? So the first time I ever heard about self-love, I'm like, everything's too airy and, you know, new agey and hippified. And it just didn't work for me. And it actually pissed me off because every time I'd read a book to try to understand what self-love was and what they were talking about, they never gave me, I just want bottom line, give me practical things, tell me what to do. Like I am a business person. I'm a task person. And I just want to know, like, give me the steps and tell me the plan and then I'll do this. So I was frustrated that I never found anyone just directly saying things. Little did I know what God or spirit had up their sleeve that this would be my path because I was aware of it from such a young age. So points of self-love were come up at different, different, um, circumstances will ha- happen in our life where we have an opportunity. See, now we could say that things happen that are challenging, that are hard on us, that this is, why is this happening and screwed up and kind of fall down on that. Or we say, look at the opportunity I have. And I had a wonderful review this weekend where I had a person that was going to rent one of my rooms and it was someone that I met through a you know one of the sites through Facebook and we had had conversations and we had several texts and over a couple weeks and I kind of he knew what my needs were I knew his and and anyways there was uh so what I didn't see on his ad was that he smoked and I, and I very much dislike smoking. Just, it doesn't work for me. I actually get sick from it. And, uh, and I'm in this, I'm a life coach, right? So it's all about health and wellness. So it wouldn't have worked. But I said to him, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't read that before. And I need to have full disclosure that this is an issue for me. And he said, I'm open to quitting. I'm not going to quit right away, but I'm an outside smoker and, and let's just meet. So he comes to my door and it was one of those experiences where it was as if I met him before. Like I remember looking at him and thinking that you look familiar. And that has often happened when I meet someone that's going to be a significant relationship in my life regardless if it's for a moment or a lifetime. But I kind of see that as identifying your soul family or a soul friend, where it's like, have have we met before? It's that feeling. So he comes in, and I show him around and all this stuff, and, and then we end up talking. And we talked for five hours. Like, we talked so much that I had to keep stopping the conversation so I could go pee and, and it was just very engaging. We got along immediately, all this great stuff. And we had a range, like anything from, you know, spaceships to like music to, it just went on and on, travel, adventures. It just like, we did not run out of things to say. And I finally had to say, okay, I'm exhausted. Like I got to go to bed. I can't, I can't, my brain's not even working anymore. So, and I joked about, Maybe that's the way to get you to quit smoking because we've been sitting here talking for so long and he hasn't smoked yet. So anyways, the point is I'm sharing all of this because so then the next day I woke up and I was exhausted. 
and I had relatives visiting and I do lunch with my dad and my daughter and we were all getting together and I was just like wiped out and I didn't quite know what was happening to me but I was aware of and I know how to care for myself to say to the relatives visiting to my dad to everyone okay after brunch I'm gonna just lay low I just want to be in my room I don't want to interact I have nothing to give and I definitely know how to turn things off instead of pushing forward when it's time that's part of self-love so I kind of hung out in my room I watched some tv I wrote some and meditated and just quiet me and my dogs and then I went to bed early and woke up in the middle of the night and then it all came to me it's as if I needed a moment to step back and then I saw okay wait a minute this is not going to work the smoking and the other things and and I had such a great connection with this person and I knew he was like a traveler and this would have been a place for him to land that he hasn't had in a while and so many different things and I heard everything he said and I'm very present when I'm with someone I, I do listen and remember what people say so I knew where he was coming from and and I was I felt very bad and I'm like okay but I was up five hours like till three in the morning and then I knew okay in the morning I I need to have this discussion so I heard him wake up and I meet him outside as he's bringing the trash cans in and I'm like okay get your coffee we need to talk and he looks at me and I'm like yeah it's one of those talks so we go outside and 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 I just have the discussion with him that I could live with you, I can't live with the addictions because I would like to adapt and we definitely have a deep connection and I feel like he's a brother from a past life or something like I feel his heart and this was intense and not a romantic relationship, like a brother, like that's how it felt to me immediately. And, um, and it was very hard for me to care for myself to such an extent and be so direct and know that it was going to make him feel bad. So oftentimes we don't stand up for ourselves for what we know is right because we don't want to hurt someone. Well, like I'm a healthcare, like my whole life is about service and helping others. So I need to express how hard this was for me. But I saw that he started to spin as soon as I said that. So I actually like place my hand on his arm just to like ground him. I'm like, just, just take a breath. This is going to be okay. Like, I don't understand any of this. I know we were supposed to meet. I know I see us like having long coffee conversations at various great coffee shops in Austin in our lives. And it's not over. Like you have me on text, on email and, and all of that. And it took him like a beat, one beat. And you know, he was like already assessing what he's going to do. And, um, and literally I went inside for like, I don't know, five minutes or so while he was smoking. And, and I go back outside and I saw his energy totally shift. And he was like, he had a plan, like, okay, things are in motion. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And he's making calls. And like, this is a guy that knows how to make his life happen. So, um, the point is, is by the end of the day, it evolved to such a level that not only did he decide to take a bus to another state and leave Austin for a while, that that's kind of what everything was saying to him, but we had this dialogue and very heartfelt dialogue. So today's my birthday. He knew it was my birthday. Again, you know that I just met this guy on a Saturday and this was now Monday, all of this happening. And he's like, I got you something for your birthday. So he got me this, these two um, that he had picked himself, these two sage sticks and, and one for ceremonial and one with white sage, which, I mean, how would he know that I love, like I love sage, like I'm a person that I'm not really a gift person, but, but I love like wind chimes and candles and Nag Champa incense and and sage sticks like the like little things like that are just so intentional for me and and he like knew right away and he also gave me this this beautiful little um rubber breast cancer bracelet 
because his sister passed from cancer a year or so ago. And he said, you know, like I'm like his sister. So we had that same feeling. And he's going to be in my life, like period. But he said to me, no one has ever spoken to him so kindly. Like it's, he says, like, I've been in situations where people just explode, like we get along great. And then that's the end of the relationship. He's like, I'm not going to change. I am who I am. And I totally respect that in him because he's a strong soul and I'm a strong person. But the whole point of this story is if any of you out there can relate about people in your lives where it is hard to make a decision because you don't want to hurt them or you see how they're in a, in a challenging time or, or yet this is how I look at life. Wait a minute. I'm a life coach. I have people come to me in house for workshops, for sessions. I do most of my stuff virtually online where I do counseling and various things, but I do have people come to my house. I mean, I started this meetup, which is the be an architect meetup for, uh, be an architect relationship for, we do, uh, David Garrison and I are doing an intensive in November the 16th and 17th from 10 to 5. So contact me if you're in Austin and want to know. It's going to be incredible. But I decided to do a meetup. So now last night was my second meetup. We do it once a month. And we actually did love languages. So I gave the example as I'm talking about the different love languages. And like from a different, some people know love languages already and some never heard of it. And uh, I gave my daughter the same little discourse over lunch today about so that you understand it. Because love languages, I just love Gary Chapman. He's written many books and he comes from a Christian uh, standpoint, which I'm more spiritual than religious. But I do love the angle because there's many systems, many ways of, of assessing um, you know, self-awareness of who we are and who someone else is. So I will offer this. So one of the things, so we talk about with the love languages, we talk about um, words of affirmation, which is people that praise you and you're doing a great job and I know you're going to get through this and thanks for, for doing that. You know, I so appreciate that you connect with me and check in by text or come and see me or, or like wrote me on Facebook. All of you out there with all your wonderful Facebook things for my birthday, I love it. Thank you. That's one of my happiest things on the planet for some strange reason is all the texts and emails and calls and Facebook happy birthdays. What a great planet because I appreciate it yet I don't have time to talk to a hundred and some people but I feel in that moment a hundred percent intention that they were thinking about me if they're just a distant friend or if they knew me and they were one of my students in the past or a friend or or somehow something I love that. But getting back to, to this self-love and this whole story. So then another of the love languages is gift giving. And that is where you give something. And do we give gifts because someone, you know, I saw this great thing and I thought of this person and I know they would like it. That's like the highest gift, the highest way of giving. Or is it a gift that, okay, this was on sale and, and it's this person's birthday and I'm giving this to them. And then they're looking at it like, oh, thank you. And then you know they're never going to wear it or use it or whatever. But the fact that he gave me that sage stick and that little cancer awareness, breast cancer awareness, little rubber uh, bracelet, that totally touched me. Like that was something from his heart that meant something to him and meant something to me. And that was beautiful. And gift giving is not one of my love languages. It doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it. We'll go over the next three love languages for any of you out there. So understanding your love language helps you to know what are your, how to get your primary needs met and your secondary needs met. So I tell everyone, know what fills you the most and know what secondly, your secondary, what fills you the most, where you feel totally recharged, where you feel totally loved, totally seen when someone does X, like do they words of affirmation? Is it a gift? And it doesn't have to be a high monetary value. It could be something intentional, like I said. The uh, third love language is quality time. And that's where you just spend time with someone, with the phone off, with the social media off, with the TV off, and you're just focused with them one-on-one. -on -one. That is my primary love language. 
And I learned that growing up because when people would give me things, I'd say, I felt like when someone gave me something that it was cold, that it was like, okay, I don't have time to have lunch with you or hang out with you or go see a movie or just sit and talk over coffee, but here's a gift. It's like it's easier to give someone something, to buy them something, than to give parts of yourself. It's also why I was good in sales my whole life, because I understand that that no matter what you sell, it doesn't matter. People are buying parts of yourself. So I know that aspect of it, and I would rather have time, quality time with someone, and it doesn't mean days. It's like if it's one hour while we're having coffee and it's just about you and me, like that will fill me up. That is like true love. If we haven't seen each other in 20 years and we even have a phone call for 10 minutes, that is true love to me. So quality time. Two of the other last of the love languages, one is acts of service. That's 100% my dad. And these are people that get fed spiritually, emotionally, and by doing acts of service. So my dad mows the lawn. Okay, I'm changing your light bulbs. Like he's my fix-it guy. And most guys are fix-it guys, but there are some guys that do it out of obligation. And there are some guys that it's just what they do. Like my daughter's moving and he's like, I have a truck and I'll help her move. And, and like, it's just what he does all the time. And in return, the acts, acts of service is occasionally, which I haven't done it since Father's Day, so it reminded me, like, I need to make him a pot of spaghetti sauce, my grandma's spaghetti sauce, because when I do that, even though I don't eat red sauce anymore, I don't eat pasta because of the carbs, and it's not my thing, I know, sorry, Grandma, up in heaven, she's up there, wait, you're Italian, but, but for him to have his mother's sauce that he was brought up on, that's like, you know, having, that's his comfort food, so I make a big area of it, a lot of it with meatballs, sausage, all that, and send him home with it so he has it for the week. So that is an act of service, to make a meal for someone, to let me clean out your car for you, let me like help with the weeds in your yard, let me like take your dogs and take them for a walk. Like all of those are acts of service. And then the last one is physical touch. And again, that's my second love language. So when I talk to people, if it's a stranger or I'll touch them on the shoulder, like I make certain it's okay, or I'll say, you know, can I, can I touch you? Can I hug you? You know, how is that? Like I have guests that stay, I do Airbnb, and I have guests that stay with me, which I love that, love meeting new people all the time. And I'm very Italian, right? So I'm like, okay, this is Aloha in Texas. Like this is, I lived in Maui 30 years and now I'm in Texas. That's what I call myself. So they walk in, I'm like, can I hug you? And I hug them, right? It's like, they don't know who I am, but they're about to stay in my home. So that's my thing. So when I talk to people or if someone's challenged or when I'm doing a counseling session and they're with me, I could be present with them when they're online. But when they're in front of me, sometimes you just need to put your hand on someone while they're speaking. Because you're an anchor for them and they're, you're grounding them. And you're like, okay, that's so compassionate. Like when you take someone's hand when they're talking to you. There's something so intimate and beautiful about that. And there are so many ways to use that physical touch. And there are other people that don't care about physical touch. Like I'm not a hugger, they'll say. But I was aware of from a young age. I was aware of, okay, so... One of my family members comes into the house, they kiss me right away, or they went right to work and doing whatever they had to do. Like, I was so aware of that. And then in my 20s and all, I would notice if I'm dating someone, I was aware of they're not holding my hand in public, or, or I would notice when they did give me public displays of affection. And it wasn't to say, look who I'm with. It's to say, in a sense, that they, they're showing me this affection that matters to me. I love physical touch. So learning those five, and what I said to my group last night is challenge yourself or use these tools as insight that think of a relationship in your life that is most challenging right now that you would like a deeper connection with and use these love language tools 
to try to understand what is the person that you're having the challenge with, what would their love language be, primary and secondary? And by understanding theirs, not yours, meet them with that. If it is words of appreciation, say, I just want to say that even though it feels like we're a little distant right now, like I really appreciate that we've had a relationship for this long and you matter to me, even though we don't connect as much as we used to, like just things like that. Or, or if gifts matter, think of something that's very important to them and, you know, send them a little uh, picture of a Austin guitar or Austin Java here because they're a musician and I'm now living in Austin and you send them that and it's like I know you love music I don't know something something that's meaningful or just say come for a visit let's go for a hike let's go for coffee any of that stuff and again touching their shoulder touching their arm asking permission can I hug you that sort of thing so and really learning to meet them with that because when I've re uh, done relationship counseling, what I found is the biggest, first off, by the time a couple comes to me, they should have come to me way before they had such disdain. And they're kind of like on opposite ends of the, of the ring, of the boxing ring. And so, but at least they come to me. And usually I say, okay, so give me examples of how you show love to your partner. And both of them will tell me this is one-on-one. -on -one. When I see a couple, I'll do a one-hour session with one, a one-hour session with the other, and then the three of us come together. And that's where it kind of blows my mind because I'll ask for permission. Can I share what you shared with me? And sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. And then later I'll talk to them privately and say, okay, that's interesting that you don't want to share that or disclose that. Or why should anything be private from your partner? Like you think, partners think that they're sharing things with each other. But yet they're not. They assume you know something, but we're not articulating it. So if we could understand our partner or our friend or our child or our parent or roommate and understand their love language, then meeting them on that level and offering that to them, showing that I'm waving the white flag of surrender, that I want you to feel loved, I want you to feel safe, then this is one of our tools. So there you go. That's it on the love language. Let's, let's talk a little bit more. All of this is about love and relationships, relationships to ourself or to another purpose, another person. So as I was saying, that was a challenging situation for me this weekend, a very quick review. But what I was proud of is all the years that I had my businesses and I was responsible for 50, 50 staff members and probably another who knows how many students in both programs and then the spa and my clients. And so it was easy for me if I had to let someone go, uh, a staff member, or if I had to talk to a student and say, here's a warning and you get, okay, and when this happens and eventually if, if we can't work this out as a group, then I'll have to, it's not your place in the program. Like that was easy for me to do because there was the whole, it affected everybody. But this was the first time in my adult life that it's just me that I acted so quickly. I was so proud. And that shows that all of my self-love daily care tools that I do on a regular basis is actually doing what I say it's doing. So, yes, I am authentic. I walk my talk. So my environment is healthy, my home space needs to be clear and calm because if you don't come home to a place that you don't have a, an area to recharge, to decompress, to just breathe and know yourself without interacting with someone else all the time, even when I'm in a partnership, I say to my partner, if you really love me, you will give me personal space because I, as an introvert, I do not I do not recharge connecting with another person. I love to connect and relating is a very strong part of who I am, but when I am depleted or going through a process, I need to be alone and I need to meditate and I need to just see who I am in relationship to the world and the universe and God, and I always get clarity when I meditate. So, 
Loving me is giving me space. So learn what you need when someone loves you. So you could say when you're in a relationship to another person, again, roommate, friend, partner, this is what I need. And be okay with saying this is what you need. Like that self-love matters. And if they see you're taking care of yourself, they're going to respond with that same respect back to you. So there you go. So now, and there are people that come in your life. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've noticed that. I've had intense, profound uh, awakening moments, like where I had a conversation one time at a cafe or somewhere that I met someone at a health food store while we were eating a salad, that the conversation changed my life, that person, and I never saw them again. But it was life-changing. There are people, there's that term where it says, is a relationship for a reason or for a season? So, meaning, is it long-term or is there for a specific teaching? And for those of you out there that have challenges, when your relationships, your long-time friendships or, or partnerships start to feel like you're not getting needs met and you actually try the tools first, and if it's still not happening, to understand everything is the law of attraction. Everything is like attracts like. It's simple chemistry. It's a simple cellular dynamic that's happening. So if I'm not offering something that is a equal attraction to someone in front of me, that is going to fade away, and we don't have as much in common. And if I'm afraid of losing that relationship, what I'm actually doing is not acknowledging my personal growth and that things have changed. And I'm not saying to discard people in your life. It is fine to have lifelong relationships, but to understand that it comes in a season, that there are times that you could not see someone for 20 years and you meet and it's as if you don't skip a beat. And that is true soul family, but you don't have to interact all the time. It's just when certain dynamics come up or when it's time or they're out of your life and it does pass. And here I am on my birthday. I'm hearing from people that I haven't heard from in many, many years. And I love it. I love that one moment of touching in. It's like totally heart filling. Okay. So now talking about self-love, I have always taught any of my listeners that are my graduates out there from all those years or clients that I have counseled from all those years, I have, and this is my third book that I'm writing, but I'm only 10,000 words in, so when I have time, I'm going to finish this one. But this book is about, basically, I've always taught what I call the five-pointed star theory, and that's because I look at certain coaches or, or counselors that they focus from a certain way, like they'll focus either on okay, let's just get your exercise down or let's just get your diet down or, or let's work on your, you know, your emotional stability or let's work on keeping your mind uh, clear and, and cognizant. And I believe that it's all of it. So if we were to do all things, so the five-pointed star has to do with diet, exercise, supplements, your environment, products you put on and in the body, and then stress reduction regime. So it's all of those things. And for us to work on that, so when I do this 30-day virtual cleanse, so I do it in two different ways. I do it one-on-one -on -one with a private person because they want to change their life on every level. They want to do a physical cleanse, which it's my specific... Um, design of over 25 years of how to eat and it's for all blood types and all ages and if and you're going to eat you're not going to starve and you're going to really be nourished one of my people that just today is the last day of his 30-day cleanse he's like I've been exercising I've been playing all kinds of tennis I've been golfing I've been everything I have no pain in my body at all and I'm like, that sounds like a testimony to put on my website once I get it finished that my father's working on. So any of you that looked at my website, spaluna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A.com, give me a couple more weeks and it's going to be totally cleaned up and streamlined. That is my promise to you. I just want links and clean and all that. Anyway, so this will be on it, the different ways that I do this. So I either do 
where one to three people can come to my home for a week and I do this detox, this full on boot camp that we're going to do this. And from morning to night, I have you on a schedule where I'm showing you how to eat a certain way, where we're doing all these ways of eating, where we're going to, we're going to do cooking classes. We're going to do infrared saunas. We're going to, I'm taking you to the gym to help you with a, a certain routine. If that's your thing, I will show you how to do uh, stretches and yoga and different guided meditations and different uh, breathing exercises. We're going to do one-on-one -on -one counseling. We're going to do all of that. So you come to my home for seven days. We get you through this and then you leave. And for the next three weeks, I'm going to follow up on that. And we're going to have a one to two hour FaceTime, Skype, Messenger, some virtual kind of check-in. And after 30 days, you're transformed. So I do that. I also do the one-on-one -on -one where they come and they're actually in the, some type of like physical therapists, they're, they're life coaches, they're nurses, they're massage therapists, they're estheticians, and they want to help coach their clients to go deeper than just doing skin care, than just doing massage on their back, but they're constantly in physical pain and we know that it's dietary and we know that it's emotional detox and mental detox and we want to work all those areas. So by teaching someone all areas, then they grow holistically where they expand instead of one shot. So if we see that I'm only going to work on exercise, then it's actually going to be, if we look at it as a circle, it's going to be a point leaning to one side and eventually that collapses. After time, be it six months, nine months, a year, that's going to collapse because you're putting too much emphasis in one area. But the way that I teach, and I give a certification for that, it's called Total Client Renovation Certification for Life Coaches, anyone in the healing industry. So you do not have to be in Austin. And I do that online. I have a couple clients going through that right now. I have three different ones, and I only do five in a month because I give you all. And you have 24-7 texting with me. But mind you, when I'm sleeping, my phone is on silent. But you text, and I'm there as your support. And when you need more, I charge a minimal fee to do one-on-one -on -one sessions during that time. I also do this in my home. So I'm going to do another one the end of January. I'm only going to take six people. That's $300. And we're going to meet together for once a week for two and a half hours in my house. And you're going to be doing this cleanse. Same thing. Tech support is there. That's T-E-X-T -E support, right? Not T-E-C-H. So text support, I am 100% there. So any of you interested in that, getting the certification to help your clients more or just doing this for yourself or needing a full reboot where you come here and you need to have your hand held for seven days before you change your life, let me know. And I do online counseling all the time. Anyways, okay. But I will teach you so many tricks. Through the years, I've had so many different clients say, I don't have time to work out. I, I don't like cooking for myself, and I will show you ways to do this streamlined, just time management, and I guarantee it will be awakening for you. So now, what else? Let's talk about addiction issues, regardless of if it's alcohol, drugs, smoking, sex, work, working too much, social media too much, whatever it is. So if we look at these addictions, the whole point of addictions are that something is something emotionally, spiritually, and mentally has been imbalanced and we have emphasized a mechanism to perpetuate a physical distraction where we intensify working more, where we need more sex, where we need more alcohol, where we need more smoking, where we need more drugs, it will intensify as the pain is getting stronger and trying to rise up for you to look at it. That is the point of addictions. I've worked with addic addicts and addictions for, again, over 20 some years. I know it very, very well. I have compassion for it. And I will tell you any addict I've ever met 
once they recover, once they see the imbalance of whatever they're using as a distraction, and they allow themselves to settle in their body and to just claim their body as home. And when I say that, I want you to take that breath, that sigh, and I want you to just feel your spirit like a, like a cloud if it's rising above you, that it just settles, that breath, that spirit just settles into this dense bone and muscle and structure, and it just lands 100%. When I do my meditation retreats for week longs or two weeks or whatever, or even when I just do my 21-minute meditation rounds, what I'm doing is I'm stopping thought, focusing on breath, sound, sensations, points of, a, of awareness in my body to allow my spirit to just settle. I'm claiming home. This is my home. And when I claim home, I am less needy to other people. Relationships flourish because I'm getting my needs met. Every time I meditate, <coughs> I get some awareness. Either I get some insight that I need to call a person because they're having a hard time. And every time I do, how did you know that? It came up in my meditation. It will come up in my meditation how to place an ad in a certain area or, or how things come together. And it, I just needed stillness to see how it all fits. So doing all of these self-care tools allows me to not do an excess or a distraction or a hiding of pain where an addiction and a mechanism has to present itself it eventually heals everything. I'm going to remind people out there with smoking addictions because I love my friend. I love my brother that has just re-entered my life and we are connected wherever he is. And that smoking is masking like probably a lifetime of grief and sadness. The stronger the mechanism to smoke, the more that it's trying to mask that sadness. And what would it look like if we just embraced that grief, if we embraced that anger, if we embraced that fear of loneliness? Whatever is happening, what happens if we just like brought tenderness to ourselves and allowed that to come up? It would be a sigh. It would be a deep sigh of relief that I don't have to run. I don't have to fight. I don't have to struggle anymore. I can just be home in my body. And people that interact with you, they will see this strength about you, this connectedness about you, and they will be curious. They will want to engage with you, want to be around you, because I feel so good around you, because I don't feel judged. I don't feel like you're taking anything from me or needing anything from me. And I just feel like you're listening. And wouldn't we want the whole world to be like that? And how we do this is we need to do it for ourselves. All relationships, I will continually say this, can only be successful when the relationship to ourself, where we have that feeling of I'm home, I'm in my body, I'm here, I'm present. And it doesn't feel good sometimes. When you land in your body, if it's the first time in your life and you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s, it's painful. But if you stay with it, as if you're the adoring parent, as if you're the ultimate angel or guide, and just say, I'm with you until, until it's over, until you don't need me to stay with you anymore. And then you just get insight and you get understanding and you see that that suffering, that pain, that sadness, that anger, that loneliness, that despair, that not feeling connected, all of that has such a short fuse. And why were we so afraid to just sit with it, to just own it, to just feel it and let it saturate, let it saturate ourselves. So... Yes, hopefully this was meaningful to some of you. So I'm going to remind you, use your cell phones for the timer on it. Set it for 10 minutes every day at the same time. 
and just write uncensored anything you need to. Just download it. Empty out all those thoughts, everything that's confusing, everything that's coming up for you. Just write it down as if you're writing to your absolute best friend or your greatest guide or the person that loves you most and then read it because you're the person that loves you most and see that okay I emptied out I cleared that out and I can just breathe and be home and there's such a peace about just being here just being present just listening listening outside listening to the birds listening to my little dog snoring in the background listening to the sound of my voice on the podcast. So do your journaling. Anyone who needs a session, you could reach me virtually. Again, Messenger, FaceTime, Skype. If you just want to do it by phone, I have one of my regulars that calls me just by phone. She doesn't want any. I don't want any video. All that's good. I can help you seeing you, listening to you, whatever it takes. I have one of my clients that is deaf. So we do everything by text. We do a counseling session. We set the timer. We have our one hour and everything is by text. And my daughter from her teens taught me how to text very fast. So we'll figure it out. I'm here to assist. My life purpose is to change the planet one person at a time. If there's anything I could do for you, contact me. Samana, S-A-M-A-N-A at Spaluna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com. My number is 808-283-7587. Feel free to text me, call however you need to do it. Again, when I'm sleeping or not available, my phone is off. It's on silent, so call anytime. And please share this podcast. And if I could ever figure out to see how many followers I have, that would be nice to know. I know I have five-star reviews, but what do you do? So... Thank you for your time. Blessings. Enjoy this time of Libra, and I will see you again next week. Aloha.